Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a reaction video. CJ Stroud is my favorite player. He is on Coldest Balls with Kevin Hart. So we're going to hop into it, see what they're talking about, get a little gist of what CJ Stroud has to say about his rookie year. Hey, for more content like this, make sure to like this video. Let's hop right into this. What's going on world? I'm Kevin Hart and I want to welcome you to Coldest Balls Season 10, live from Vegas. <laughs> Crazy, we're already on season 10 of it. I think this started like five or six years ago. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. CJ, we're gonna put our robe, put our robe on the back hook. Got a in big this studio here. for this. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, what's up? Got on, a live man. audience. My bad, I'm trying to hang it up. How you doing? Good, brother. Appreciate Good, you I'm having me. I'm excited. I appreciate you coming yes, on. Sir. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Just that one right here. <laughs> Uh, welcome. Welcome to a live edition of Cold as Balls. Today's guest is an absolute fantastic guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the rookie of the year, man. Yes, 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 yes. Please yes, welcome CJ yes. Stroud CJ to Cold as Balls. Um, what was it like for you in those beginnings days, uh, you know, taking on the field in Houston? Talk to me about the beginning of it. Yeah, the beginning of it really starts all the way back in college, man. Uh, by like August of 2023 is when I started fall camp. And then we played our season, played in the college football playoff, lost to Georgia. And then after that, I declared. And after I declared, I went straight into work. So, like, no offseason for me. I went straight into working and uh, working for my combine and my pro day. And so, really, it's the longest year of your life, man. That rookie year is super long. It's been a heck of a ride, man, but I'm truly, truly blessed. That's true. Well, when is the confidence? His first year. This is his first rookie season. I mean, his rookie season. This is his first offseason. After, right after your, after your college season, you have to do all the types of NFL draft things, the combine. You got to do your pro day, draft. Off, you know, like, this is first off season. So I'm curious what type of growth he's going to have with his very first off season. Then switch. When did that start to settle in during the season? Like, okay, wow, I'm capable of f***ing these guys up on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, it was about, like, week four, you know. Uh, we played the Steelers at home. It was the first time with a packed crowd at home. And we went crazy. We, we scored 30 points on one of the top defenses in the league. And that was the moment I was like, man, I can really play in this league. And I don't think nobody can mess with me. Quarterback. He ain't, think, he, he ain't think like that in week three when he faced you. You beat Jacksonville. You scored 37 in Jacksonville. I thought that. But, hey, that was a lit game. It's a position of leadership, right? So as a rookie, that's not something that's given. It's something that's earned. Right. Um, for you, what, Daryl, Daryl, oh, what, oh, what are you doing? Oh, Daryl, God damn it, lose his ass. What? Get your big ass back, ma'am. <laughs> Get back. Bam, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of a, go over there? Shit. You don't hear me asking hard-hitting questions? Sorry, CJ, you know, he's got an attitude. Sometimes right, right, bear right. come in hot. Right. You just got to settle him down. You better stop it. You stuck. Okay. Can I finish, please? All right. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I'm sorry. It's a live crowd, this man. Must have been the Super Bowl. Um, what type of reception or warmth uh, did the locker room present to you in those early stages of the season? I came in just trying to build trust. So, uh, you know, just having dudes over the house, you know, taking them to dinner. And it took for me to play good. Like, when you play good, uh, the stuff that you've been trying to say for a while starts to resonate because y'all start winning games. And, yeah. you know, winning just gains respect not only in the rock locker room, but in other locker rooms and other teams. So, you, you know, that, that was one way that I gained the respect. It was just building trust. I can relate to that. You know, that's how I built a lot of respect when I played football. What position did you play? You know, I played a little quarterback. I played okay. quarterback when I played. CJ, this is not, like, new information. The world knows <laughs> that I played sports, that I played football. You know, I want to know your secret. Your secret to staying fresh. Fresh and confident throughout the game. What's your secret to doing that? God. You know, it's a lot of tension in a football game. A it's lot a big of God, boy. You getting hit hard. You might throw an interception. There's a lot of pressure moments. The way I get through that, I just do a lot of breathing exercises. Okay. Um, I try to talk it out because I'm the type of person I like to keep things inward and then I'll explode. Okay. So I'm knowing that, uh, the way I do it on my own is just breathing. I like that. Uh, white hand, please. Thank you. Oh, wow. Come out. Yep. Let me tell you about my secret. You know, my secret is Old Spice, <laughs> right? Total body deodorant spray. It gives me 24-7 freshness from the pits w all the way to the toes and down to below with daily use. This is not a plug, CJ. This is just me telling hey, you what I used to. Kevin Hart, Kevin yeah, Hart is sure. looking old. I'll tell yeah. you got that great company. Go to give yourself a little dose. I was going to smell it. It smells good. It smells good. It smell good. Oh, you got you w think w I'm promo? using something that stinks? Vanilla and shade. I yes. Like that. It smells good. Here you go, white hand, take that back. All right, CJ, the questions are about to get a little harder. We're getting deeper in the tub. Oh, no. Let's go. Tub, boy. That's right. Get deeper in the tub, buddy. Okay. All right. Ah. Okay. 
What made you choose football? Were there any other sports? Any other sports that were like at like the top basketball. of your your your? I guess you could say your list of wants, or was it always football and only football? I was a big basketball kid. Yeah. I love basketball, and uh, I'm coming after your celebrity MVP next week. I'm going. Well, you do know when you talk yeah, about boy, the celebrity game, you're talking to a Hall of Famer. It took okay. some months, boy. Uh, <laughs> celebrity <laughs> MVP. Celebrity game MVP. February, Anybody can do it once, but to do it four times, okay, is incredible. Well, I have to get there four times. I'll do There's that. not a lot of people that have done it. To be in the same conversation with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, okay. LeBron James. Right, Great. Right, right. Uh, no, it's it's instant, like, this is so long. You just hold this in the vault for two months and then release it. Because this is back back in February. And th that means he was going through every CJ Stroud, he was, you know, he went to the All-Star game. He did this. He was on many podcasts. I mean, he was on a tour. After his season ended, he said, I'm making sure my name is known. Hey, that's a good W marketing, man. It's mind blowing for me. So you playing in the celebrity game is a big deal. But to think that you would do it after not making it in basketball is weird. Um, when did you, when did you <laughs> realize, right. when did you realize that you weren't good in basketball oh, wow. and that you had to make a switch? Uh, my friends so, oh, wow. started to get to them. six ten and uh, like six eight, six six. I stayed around six two, six three. So uh, they started blocking my shot, and I didn't like it. So I went to the football field. I actually joined uh, the what SYFL with Snoop Dogg and played in his league and. Uh, that was really the time where I was like, okay, I, got, I started getting confidence that I can probably do this for real. Yeah, I don't think people realize how serious Snoop is mm -hmm. with you football. As a younger kid that came up in that program, did it made you look at Snoop differently to see how hands-on he was in that league? You know, growing up, um, you see celebrities from afar, you see him on TV, and Snoop, like, he really does love kids, he really does love helping his community. And growing up in that league, man, it was a lot Shout of people who were Snoop going through Dog, some of the boy. same similar Football issues lover. at home that I was going through. So it was yeah, a lot Steelers of uh, things that I could relate to. Big random. shout out to SYFM, Snoop, man. Uh, I still am in contact with him know. today. And Probably honestly, I would never be here without him. It's, it's dope to hear you say that. No, that deserves love. <laughs> deserves a lot of love. Um, you know, you talked about the problems, you know, when you were coming up. People related to the world of problems that you were having. What proposed itself to be some of the biggest problems for you coming up? When I was around, like, uh, 12 years old, uh, my father was incarcerated. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody talks about how mature I am, but that was a, the moment where I became really mature because, uh, you know, I didn't have my father around anymore. Where I could have went um, the wrong way or the right way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, by the glory of God, uh, Coach Fly, who coaches with Snoop, um, he was the one who came and grabbed me and took me to practice. And ever since then, I'm at his house every week. Uh, you know, I'm growing up with his kids, and he's treating me like one of his own. So, you know, shout out to Coach Fly. But that was a pivotal point in my life where, you know, I had to make a lot of grown man decisions. Dope as hell. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Now we're going to shift gears. We're going to go back to the NFL. You know, we talked about you winning Rookie of the Year. You had a coach that did a phenomenal job who also acted as a rookie. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that relationship. I felt a connection with D'Amico when I first got uh, uh, there on Ida 30 visit, which basically is uh, you go on a visit before the draft. And, uh, you know, I can feel his intensity, how much he loved the city of Houston. He played for the Texans. Um, he really wanted to turn that team around. You know, uh, we've been bad for a couple years. A that couple? Was a, yeah, just a couple. Finish yeah, like show. It's been a shit show. Not anymore. Years. Well, it's great now. We're farther than the Eagles. Well, we don't need to talk hey, about that. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what I thought. There's no need yeah. for us to. Hey, so no, hey, it's more. Hey, hey, CJ, you keep repping Houston, boy. People talking, they get a little too reckless when they talk. They're like, you know, let's just talk. No, relax. Relax. Okay, relax. <laughs> Two, three years, we were bad. We were good before. Things happen. Here we are again. So, you know, you talk, you say one little thing, you had two, three, four, you start stacking stuff up. Okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're just about, you know, the love of the game at this point. Okay. And making sure that you that's have. That's fine with me. Uh, yes, that's, <laughs> that's all. Uh, who have you leaned on for mm -hmm. veteran leadership in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I, I would lie. You know, I think okay. one thing that I appreciate, even being a black quarterback, is the brotherhood that we have. We help one another, you know. Yeah. Michael Vick has been uh, one of the main ones, and somebody oh, that's the, my, was my favorite quarterback. One of the reasons I wore number seven. Um, Cam Newton has reached out. Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Justin Fields, who I played with at Ohio State, has helped me out a ton. Even like the OGs, Warren Moon and Randall Cunningham, Warren Moon. Down to me. And my dad used to put on, uh, you know, YouTube tapes of them. Sometimes you look in the mirror as a young black man, like. Everybody else maybe not look like me that, are, that is in the NFL right now, yeah. but uh, seeing Warren Moon, seeing Randall Cunningham doing, seeing Michael Vick do it and be themselves, you know, gave me a lot of inspiration. So it's, it's, a, it's an honor, it's a blessing to learn from people who you were inspired by. Absolutely. Coming from college and now being in the NFL, passionate. what was the most <laughs> noticeable change that you saw? Man, the play calls are super long. So like in college you get signal. So like hey, double right, double right, yeah, and we'll go here, yeah, you know the play, double right, um, and then we'll throw a bomb or something. In the NFL, yeah. 
all the players in the league know the words can get really lengthy. So, and they're telling you in a, in a microphone, kind of like how we're talking to this. If you mess up the play, it doesn't, you can't execute. Yeah, uh -oh. I hate that, by the way. Ma'am, do me a favor. Can you wait till we finish? Ma'am, yeah, like listen to me. Ten I don't need any more ice. Ma'am, I'm telling you right now. Oh, look no. at me. It's a live audience here. <laughs> uh, can you stop being an a hole. Oh. Ma'am, stop being an a hole. Okay, right. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Daryl? <laughs> God damn it. What? Okay. Go back, please. Please. I swear to you, I don't know why I have them. I really don't, man. They're entertaining, I'm, I'm but talk wow. to you, right? <laughs> right, you don't. Play. I want to talk to you, man, about the idea of endorsements. I want to congratulate you on your alignment with C4 and what you're doing there. The C4 has been amazing to me, man. Uh, they were my first the, deal I've ever gotten in college. I might be uh, wrong. Is that the, the NIL mm -hmm. at the time, you know? Uh, we carried our relationship all the way to the league, and you know that just means a lot. Knowing that they had that trust in me, not only in college, but to take it to NFL. So, you know, it's been amazing. It helps me a lot. You know, sometimes you waking up in training camp. You know, it's it day is, yeah. 14, and you got meetings in the morning. Sometimes you need that extra boost of energy. So, Absolutely. the league has approved need, it. You know, so it's too, been amazing man. to work with these guys, man. They've <laughs> been amazing. I know life. you work with them as well. Absolutely. C4 energy hits different. Uh, uh, tell me what the world of success looks like for you in the NFL. You know, it's crazy. I, I got to talk to my dad last night after I won the award, and I was super blessed to be able to talk to him. And he was talking about my first ever, like, game. Uh, I did, like, a fake run to the left that you know how to do. Ah, yeah. fake left roll. I, yeah, call yeah, it, uh, that one. I call it left roll fake. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. Um, and the defensive end came free, and no one blocked him. I got the ball off, threw it in flat, and the dude hit me right in the mouth, and my tooth fell out. Dang. And they were trying to take me out. And I was like, nah, nah, hold on, hold on. Like, you can't take that, me out. Like, I got to finish the drive. I got that dog And the next play, uh, my coach, his name is Tojo, yeah, he caught a bomb, and I threw a touchdown. And he was like, man, like, like, why did you do that? And I'm like, I just love this game. He asked me, like, what do you want out of this game, CJ? Like, we're not going to do this, uh, you know, just for shits and giggles. And I'm like, uh, I want to be a Hall of Famer. I'm nine years old. So, mm. like, and I still have that same level of focus, that same level of you determination told you that, uh, to <laughs> he this said day. We not I love doing it, this man. For it. <laughs> uh, a future Hall of Famer. We're hey, them, them boys got that. Bro, he's nine years old. They say, we're not doing this for shits and giggles, boy. At nine, like, yes, you are. But, hey, he got that, he had that dog in him since he was nine, man. Talking to, and we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, the talking. rookie of the year, damn it. Y'all show some love to C.J. Stroud. Thank you, guys. One time. Appreciate it. One time. Thank you. Then I couldn't ask for better guests, man. I can't wait to see Appreciate what you do next, it. brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Daryl, bam, let's go. Get his, get his robe. Bring his robe to him, Daryl. Daryl, you, you should have had it ready. I said, have the robe ready. Get the robe, Daryl. I know they they had a professional, they had a live audience, so they couldn't do more uh, hijinks. I was dope though. That's dope. He had that dog in him since he was nine years old. That's good for him. Um, hey, I'm a Texan fan, so I'm very excited to see what CJ do with the fall off season. Hopefully next year, some really good things happen, and hopefully we take that next step. I mean, we're taking a big step already, but you know, hopefully, you know, with the talent we got at free agency, and hopefully a really good draft. You never know. But if you like this video, make sure to like the video. Comment down below what you think. And I'm out of here. Peace.